As believers, we can live victoriously over the flesh, the world, and the devil. In part 5 of this series, we discover biblical practices to overcome the flesh. All right. To help us with our declaration, Stephen Jones will lead us in our declaration. He's one of our young leaders, so Stephen. Check. Good morning, church. How many... How many of us are excited to declare the promises of God uh, into our lives? Can we say amen? Great. Uh, I was really gripped by uh, what Sushil said, one of the worship leaders who led us in worship today. Uh, he said, uh, uh, hairs are numbered. How many of us believe that our hairs are numbered? We have a father, a loving father uh, who's in heaven who's above all other thrones, uh, the one who rules and reigns over everything. You name it, you name everything, he's sovereign over everything. Uh, do we believe that, church, that he is sovereign over everything and the, the one who is above all other throne? Amen. Uh, before we get into declaration, I just want to lead us uh, uh, from John chapter. Can we all turn uh, to John chapter 11, and read from verse uh, 40 to 43. It's a familiar passage. Uh, most of us know uh, the story, what uh, happened. Uh, let's just read from uh, ch- uh, verses 40 till about 43. Then Jesus said, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me. But I said this for the benefit of people who are standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. When he said that, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. And we, we all know what, is, what was the end of the story. The dead man came alive. Uh, We see some of the things here, what uh, Jesus uh, does. Standing before the tomb, uh, who was dead for almost four days, uh, Lord assured Martha that that if she believes, she would see the glory of God manifesting in our lives, in our life. Uh, We also see that, you know, uh, he thanked the Father God for having heard his prayer. And Jesus also spoke the word of command, Lazarus, come forth. I don't know what are the things that we are going through in our lives, or maybe some of the things that we we believe in our lives uh, might be something like Lazarus, uh, something something which is dead. For some of us, it could be even worse. It's dead. It's lying in tomb uh, for so many days. and for some of us, it's even worse. It's, it's decaying, the smell, this bad smell that's coming out of the, those situations. But, but I want to I wanna just emphasize on one thing. Though God's promises is very clear. Someone told me uh, what it means to walk, uh, in, walk holding the promises of God. It's, it's like walking on a firm uh, bridge. No matter what is underneath, uh, you are walking uh, when you're walking on a firm bridge, it doesn't matter what's underneath. You don't care. You don't think what's underneath. You just walk knowing that this bridge is firm, steady. So that is what walking in the promises is like. Uh, we see here, God promised her, Martha that if she believed, she would uh, see the glory of God. Uh, how many of us believe the word uh, the, the promises of God in our lives that God will fulfill that. Can, can I hear I'm into it? Thank you. Uh, let's raise up to our feet and uh, declare it strong and bold, believing it in our hearts, not just knowing it in our head. Head knowledge is good, but believing it as heart is what makes a world of a difference in our lives. So let's say it strong and bold. This is God's word. This is God speaking to me. I am who God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. I will become everything God has promised. 
I am saved, I am healed, I am delivered, redeemed. I am blessed, victorious, prosperous, triumphant. I am a minister of God, a servant of Christ, and a channel of his blessing to many people. I receive his word, I believe his word, and I live by his word. Christ is my master. To him, I am an absolute surrender. I walk in the more glorious covenant with God. I live in the more glorious life in the Spirit. I manifest the more glorious ministry of the Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Be seated. All right, you ready for some good news? All right, let's try that again. <laughs> Are you ready for some good news? All right, we had several testimonies come in. That's good news, right, the testimonies. There were a couple of testimonies that were sent uh, more in private. Um, and basically, you know, the words that were given out last Sunday, there was Benny and there was... Uh, uh, Roshan, who, uh, who gave out words, and so these the, these 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 words, the words that they spoke, really impacted the uh, people who are watching live. But they sent their testimony in private. Uh, it was a little personal, so we won't share that um, uh, with uh, out in here. Um, I just want to let you know that those words impacted the lives of people who were listening. Um, I'll share a couple of uh, healing testimonies. Um, this one. Uh, again, all of these came this past week. Uh, uh, last Sunday, there was a man who was watching online. Of course, he had a severe upper left upper back pain. He was actually lying flat. He couldn't sit up. So he was actually lying flat and watching the service at that time. And we called that out and we prayed. Immediately, he, he felt relief in his pain uh, from the pain in the shoulder. He sat up and he praised God for that. And this happened while he was watching online. Uh, there was another young lady who shared a testimony. She said um, she was suf suffering from a chronic health condition for six years. And uh, the only treatment uh, that she could have was modifying her diet or going in for surgery. She tried modifying her diet, but uh, the condition kept re recurring and also affected her daily schedule. Uh, she thought she had lost all hope. Then on our previous, uh, on our last Supernatural Sunday... Uh, during the time of ministry, we were praying. We were, you know, commanding spirits of infirmity specifically to leave. Uh, she prayed for our healing, agreeing with that. Broke the yoke of sickness. She felt the presence of God. And uh, she felt the Lord tell her, you are healed. Uh, she went back. She had it checked. Uh, and then she went back to a normal diet. And she's had no problems whatsoever. All the symptoms have gone. And the Lord has healed the organ that was associated with that problem as well. Amen? All right, you can clap. Just say, thank you, Lord. Amen. And here's an interesting testimony. This is a mother, daughter who've been watching our services online from Delhi. And uh, it's a little personal, but I'll just share it because they've written, you know, they've, they felt liberty to share this. Um, the daughter was having uh, problems with her uh, menstrual cycles for, for, a long, for some time now. And her condition was so bad, she, uh, her periods lasted for 26 days in a month. Uh, she had to take uh, homeopathy medicines, uh, try to reduce the bleeding, and it didn't work. So they prayed and asked the Lord to stop that. And uh, I don't know which Sunday was this, but I think it was last Sunday. Yeah, last Sunday, uh, while we were praying and ministering, we, we prayed for all blood issues. So the mother was there. She claimed that for her daughter. And uh, it, uh, the testimony says, the next day, her period started, but this time we just they were counting the days. Uh, it lasted just five days, six days. She was completely fine, clear. And so I just want to thank the Lord for that work of healing. Amen? Uh, so, you know, testimonies, small or big, God is the healer. Amen? And we just want to thank the Lord for, you know, for these people who've shared their testimonies and uh, just let us know what God is doing. And it's wonderful to know that, you know, even while people are watching online, wherever they are, uh, they're being ministered to, the words that are being released are touching them, of course, and the people also in the service are being ministered to. 
All right. Uh, let's spend some time in the Word of God today. I know we're slightly behind schedule. Usually the sermon starts at 11.30. We are like almost 12 here. Uh, just bear with us. Uh, over the last several Sundays, okay, one more testimony. I need to share this. You know, uh, I'll just quickly share this and we'll start the message. Sure. Uh, a strange thing happened. Uh, there was a radio station in Houston, uh, in Texas, that reached out to us, and they said uh, uh, they would like us to have our programs on their radio station. Now, this is a Christian radio station, an FM radio station in Houston, and uh, of course, they have very renowned preachers on the on the station as well, and uh, Houston has one of the largest churches in America, so I don't know why they reached out to us, but uh, I thought it was just, just gracious that you know God would open this door. So we sent them a sample radio program. They accepted it, and uh, they've given us two weeks of radio programs for free. It'll be on Monday through Friday, every every night, 10 p.m. for two weeks. Uh, so f- you know, starting this coming week, we've sent our radio programs there, and uh, and then after that, uh, of course, during the two weeks, they're going to find sponsors. If they can if they can find people who will sponsor the program. It's about uh, two fifty dollars a week. Um, to have that on the air, uh, then you know we'll probably continue. And if you don't, uh, if they don't get a sponsor, then it's fine. Uh, but I just wanted to share that with you. Uh, we're just saying God, thank you, you know, for this opportunity that at least we could, you know, uh, sitting here in Bangalore, minister to people in Houston on the radio, and uh, and that's happening. Uh, you can also listen to them on online if you want, because it's also on the on the internet. You can go to kkht kkht.com. Uh, it's 10 p.m. Houston time. You can listen to the program, or you can listen to it anytime because they have it as podcast as well. But just thankful to God for this opportunity, and let's see where this is going to go. Amen. All right, let's get into the Word of God. Uh, we've been uh, talking about overcoming the last several weeks, and um, just to quickly review, uh, what we have emphasized is that all of us as believers can live overcoming lives. Each one of us can live victorious, overcoming lives. Live victorious over the flesh, the world, and the devil. We can live victorious, overcoming lives. And uh, we just built the message. We said that in, in the second part that we can overcome because of the cross and of our, because of our identity in Christ. On the cross... The work was completed. Jesus destroyed. He did a lot of things, but he, one of the things he did was he broke the power of sin. He destroyed, he destroyed the power of sin over our lives. So because of the cross and also because of our identity in Christ, who we are in Christ, we can live overcoming victorious lives. Then we also saw that God has given us his word and he's given us his spirit. By his word and by walking in the spirit, you and I can live Victorious overcoming lives. So what we want to do now as we progress in this message is talk about each of these three realms. The flesh, the world, and the spirit. uh, Flesh, the world, and the devil. And talk about how we can actually walk uh, 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 victorious. Walk as overcomers. So today we're going to talk about overcoming the flesh. What do we need to do uh, to live victorious over the things we face in our flesh. So if you have your Bibles, please turn with me to James chapter 1, verses 13 to 16. We're going to start there. James chapter 1, verses 13 to 16. Let's read it together, please. I know uh, all of us will have uh, different uh, versions of the English Bible. That's okay. Uh, Whatever version you have, let's read it out loud together. James chapter 1, verses 13 to 16. Let's go. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he's drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Then, when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. So what is James telling us? He's saying, when 
when you know he's talking about temptation which are really inducements to sin to do things that are wrong so he says you know when you're tempted brethren don't say god is tempting me don't blame it on god right because god first of all cannot be tempted by evil god is so holy he has no interest in anything evil and neither does he tempt anyone god is not going to tempt you and me and say go 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 sin no so don't blame it on god don't say god made me do it there is no such thing as holy sin that's a revelation right <laughs> there is no such thing as holy sin sin is sin small or big and god is not the one who induces us to do that so he says don't say that god tempted me god is telling me to do it no but he says this is the problem verse 14 everyone whoever is tempted he says when we are tempted we are drawn by what our own desires our own desires that's the problem see we've got wrong desires bad des- wrong desires evil desires sinful desires in our body in our flesh in our body in our soul the uh, carnal part of us the fleshly part of us and when we are drawn by that we are enticed enticed means our will is weakened and then when we give in to it that's when we sin and if we continue in it it's going to destroy us it's is going to bring forth death so he says don't be deceived brethren i mean don't deceive yourselves this is the truth this is it so all of us as believers you see we are born again we love jesus we are new creation uh we 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 you know we may be filled with the holy spirit praying in tongues all of that wonderful thing but our body still has evil desires the flesh and so we have to learn how to overcome the flesh how and god has given us everything we need to live victorious to overcome the flesh and that's what we want to talk about now what i would lo- i would have loved to read romans chapter 8 verses 1 to 13 that entire passage but i'm just going to skip that just for the sake of time but i would encourage you to read that uh, because like we said last sunday when he talked about walking in the spirit our uh, romans chapter 8 it's just an amazing chapter paul the apostle has been building up you know romans 5 he talks about the fact that we are the righteousness of god in romans 6 he says you know the power of sin has been broken in romans 7 he says you know uh, there is this problem in the flesh romans 8 he says this is how you deal with the problem in the flesh so just an amazing uh, uh, revelation that he's unfolding for us but i'm going to skip romans 8:13 and i'm just going to go straight to uh, some truth some understanding we need and then we talk about how do we overcome the flesh you see uh, as believers we can be still carnally minded that means we can be carnal in our thinking and flesh ruled in in our in our life you're born again you're a new creation but you're carnally minded and you're flesh ruled so a carnally minded flesh ruled believer is given to thinking about what what satisfies the cravings the wrong desires of their body and soul they're believers but they're focused on that and that's when you know the bible talks about the works of the flesh so we come up with we end up with all the thing, wrong things we end up with strife uh, division anger uh, jealousy uh, uh, all these things and you say like oh, i thought he was a believer yes he's a believer but he's carnally minded and flesh ruled and that's why we're seeing all these things coming out of their lives they have not yet overcome the flesh in their lives they're still that way and so we must learn how to overcome the flesh how do we overcome these things and uh, keep in mind as james said you know if we live according to this carnal mind and keep giving in to the cravings of our flesh it'll end up in death meaning it's going to destroy us so it's not good to live that way how do we overcome i want to just present to us four simple things uh, on on what you and i must do as believers number one know you are free from the power of sin first thing no that you are free from the power of sin and we saw this earlier jesus finished this work for us on the cross 
Romans 6 and verse 6. Let's read that. Knowing this. Right. Let's, yeah, let's read it. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, so that we no longer should be slaves of sin. So he says, know this. Know this truth. Take it to your heart. Embrace it. Know this truth. What? That our old man, the old sinful nature, was nailed to the cross. You do not have a sinful nature that was broken. It was put to death. And the body of sin, talking about the power of sin over our lives, was destroyed. So that we no longer need to be slaves of sin. And then in verse 14, he says, let's read it. Sin will not have dominion over you. For you're not under the law, but under grace. Sin will not have dominion over you. See, as a believer, you need to know there is no sin that can dominate you. Because Jesus broke the power of sin on the cross. Amen? Doesn't matter how, how, how tight a hold it might have on you today as you're sitting and listening to this message. I want you to know that Jesus set you free from the dom dominion of sin. And you're not under law, but you're under grace. Under law, God said, this is what I want you to do. Go do it. Under grace, he says, I'll do it for you. I'll finish the work for you. You live out of it. You're not under law. You're under grace. The work's been done on the cross. He broke the power of sin. Now he says, live out of that. Amen? So as a believer, you need to know. There is no sin that can dominate you. No sin that can control you. You are free. So you can look at every sinful habit that you, are, you might be struggling with today. You can look at it and say, you do not have dominion over me. Because your power over my life was broken on the cross. Amen? Amen? So that's where we start off with, by knowing that we really have uh, freedom from the power of sin. Then what must we do? Number two, is use the word in relation to your area of weakness. Use the word of God. We had a complete sermon on the importance of the word. Use the word of God. In relation to your area of weakness. So we know Psalm 119 and verse 9. Can we all read it out loud please? How can a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed according to your word. So the word of God has a cleansing effect on our lives. It cleanses us. How can a young man keep his way clean? By paying attention to your word. Letting the word affect his life. So what must we do? You must use the word in relation to your area of weakness. You see, even if you go to the, I don't know, which, where you go do your grocery shopping, but even if you buy 10 bars of soap and bring it home, if you don't use the soap, mother is still going to say, you don't smell good. It's not going to help. It doesn't matter how many versions of the Bible you have sitting at home. If you don't open even one of them and take it in and use that word, it's not going to help. So we need to use the word, take the word of God and use it against, in your area of weakness, against that sin. So just for example, illustration's sake, let's say lying is a problem. I'm not talking about you. No. Let's say, example, lying. Now, maybe you lie, you know, to get out of difficult situations. You think that's the easy way I can get out. Maybe people may lie because they want to get some things done. You know, maybe in business transactions and sales deals and all different situations. You lie in order to get close a deal, do something, whatever. Sometimes maybe we lie because we're under pressure. But the fact is, lying is a sin. It's an abomination to God. Romans, uh, Proverbs 6, 17 and 18. It says, God hates that. It's 
he, he detests it. Now, some of us, you know, may lie even without no, noticing it. Means like, it's like a reflex action. You know, somebody calls home, somebody answers the phone, they say, you know, they want to talk to you, say, just tell them I'm not here. Well, that's a lie, because you are there. And sometimes we don't even think, you know, just like, just tell them I'm not here. God hates lying. And so, let's say, you know, you come to this place where you say, God, uh, this is a problem in my life. I, I, I'm just lying oh, in, in every, every other situation. I'm lying. I'm lying to people. I'm lying at work. I'm lying here. I'm lying. God, I need, a, I need a break free from this. What should I do? First, know that lying cannot control you. You say lie, lying, this sinful pattern. Jesus Christ broke you off of my life 2,000 years ago. You have no right in my life. You may have Lived like this so long that it's become second nature to you, so to speak. But today, you can break it. You must know that it has no power over you. Second, use the word. So you might take scriptures like these. I'm just mentioning a few. You could take others. For instance, you might take Proverbs 12 and verse 19. The truthful lip. Let's read it out together. The truthful lip shall be established forever, but a lying tongue tongue is but for a moment the truthful lip will be established forever meaning that's got long-term gain the lying tongue is is for a moment it's just it's I just, it may give you an immediate benefit but it's going to put you in trouble later our Proverbs 8 verse 7 let's read it for my mouth will speak truth wickedness is an abomination to my lips that's, that's the word of God. So my mouth will speak truth. Wickedness, I just hate it. It's not going to be part of me. Or you can take this verse from Ephesians 4.25. Paul writes, he says, Therefore, putting up a lying, let each one of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. So put up a lying, speak truth. Paul's writing. So you take these scriptures. You could take some more. Uh, Psalm 19, 14, let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart uh, be acceptable to you, O Lord, uh, my strength, my redeemer. Or you could take Psalm 141, verse 3, set a guard, O God, over my mouth, keep watch over the door of my lips. So you take these scriptures. And what do you do? You start speaking them over your life. Speak the word. Meditate in it. Speak it. Say, O God, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be pleasing in your eyes. Say, my lips will speak truth. And wickedness is an abomination to me. I, I put away lying. And I will speak truth to every person next to me. So you take the word of God. And you speak it over your own life. You've got to use the word of God in the area of your weakness. Are you listening? Those who are listening can say amen. <laughs> so use the word of God. Because it's this word that's going to cleanse you. It's this word that's going to uh, work in your life and, and, and set you free. So take that word. And do this in every area of your life. Whatever area of struggle it might be in the flesh. Whatever evil desire you know is, is pulling you and enticing you over and over and over again. Use the word. The area of sexuality is a big problem for many. I'm talking about believers. So what do you do? Take the scriptures. Now, whatever evil thing in that area of your sexuality is, is, is tearing you down, is pulling you down. Take the scriptures. First Corinthians 6 is a great passage, verse 13 to 20. You know, uh, Paul writes that he says, you know, the body is not for sexual immorality, but it's for the Lord and the Lord is for the body. So you begin to speak and say, my body is not for sexual immorality. My body is for the Lord. And then he says, my, he continues, that was verse 13. Then verse 15 says, my body is a part of the body of Christ. So you say, my body is part of the body of Christ. I cannot take this body and make it part of immorality. He says, verse 17, my we, he was joined to the Lord spiritually, one with him. Then he says, verse 19, 
your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. And then verse 20, he says, your body has been bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. So you take the scriptures, speak it over your body. Say, God, I consecrate all my uh, sexual appetites to you. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 3 to 7 is again in a very powerful passage talking about sexual purity. Paul writes, he says, you know, a God, know this, that God has called us to, uh, he has not called us to uncleanness, but to holiness. Therefore, each one of us should know how to possess our vessel in sanctification and honor. So you say, I possess my body in sanctification and honor. You need to take that word and speak it over your body, your mind. Are you with me? If you don't do that, then the word that God has given to us is really not going to help you. It's not going to strengthen you. You've got to do, speak the word, use the word in the area of your weakness. Number three, this is just a four-point sermon, so we've crossed the midway mark. Walk in the spirit and crucify the flesh. We talked about walking in the spirit. Last Sunday, to walk in the spirit means you're walking under the influence of the Holy Spirit. So you walk in the spirit. It means day by day, it's like, Holy Spirit, I'm, I'm submitted to you. I'm walking under your influence. You're walking in the spirit. But what does the Holy Spirit do? He helps us crucify the flesh. Galatians 5, verse 16, the scripture says, let's read it. Walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So you walk in the spirit, you're going to overcome the flesh. You won't give in to it. Because the Holy Spirit is going to empower you to overcome the flesh. Walk in the spirit. Now, what happens? And you and I are walking in the spirit. And this is where I wanted to reference Romans 8. But we'll pick a few verses there. Romans 8 verse 13. Let's read it. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of your body, you will live. Let's say this out together. I, by the spirit, put to death the sinful deeds of my body. Let's say it again. I, by the Spirit, put to death the sinful deeds of my body. Notice it says, by the Spirit. That means with the help of the Holy Spirit. You put to death, crucify, bring an end to the sinful deeds of your body. And you will live. You will live. So that's what we need to do. You walk in the spirit and you crucify the flesh. You put to death the sinful deeds of the body. Amen. Now, one of the ways we draw strength from the Holy Spirit is through prayer. Jesus taught in Matthew 26. He said, you know, watch and pray. Lest you fall or enter into temptation. Because the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So spirit is ready. Yes, Lord, I want to live holy. Flesh is weak. God, I've got these evil cravings in my body. What do you do? Watch and pray. So prayer is important. And praying in tongues, praying in the Holy Spirit is very important. Because in that same chapter in Romans 8 and verse 26, Paul says this. The spirit also helps us in our weaknesses. The Holy Spirit helps us what? In our weaknesses. For we do not know what to pray for as we ought. So in the battle against things in our flesh, which is the context of Romans, uh, uh, the earlier part of Romans 8, we don't know what to pray for. Now, it's not to say, bind it, lose it, cast it out, take it in. It's like, I have no clue what I'm praying. <laughs> it says... The Holy Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. We don't know what to pray for as we are. But the Spirit himself makes intercession with groanings that cannot be uttered. That word help is very important. Can I have two young men come up with me? Come up to the stage here, please. Uh, right now. 
for this illustration. Two young men. Oh, come on, worship team. Come on, come on, come on. Uh, Joshua and uh, Sushi. All right. The Holy Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. The word help is a very interesting word. It means to take a hold of together with us against our weakness. Okay. So she, yes, last week you were the Holy Spirit. So continue as the Holy Spirit. Please come. Uh, Joshua, please stand this side. We're going to do arm wrestling. Now, and so she, stand behind me and hold, give me, uh, back me up. Come, just come and sit. All right. Okay. So she is the Holy Spirit. Joshua, just example. He's a good man. <laughs> but for this illustration is a weakness in my flesh. So whenever I struggle on my own, I keep losing. Holy Spirit is in me, but this weakness is stronger. I try, 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 lose. Try, 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 lose. But the Bible says, the Spirit himself helps me in my weakness. So that's when I say, Holy Spirit, help me. I'm not saying, Holy Spirit, do it for me. That's not going to work. I'm saying, Holy Spirit, help me overcome my weakness. And I pray in the Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit, help me. So the Bible says, Romans 8, 26, the Spirit himself helps us in our weakness. Oh, please let us down. <laughs> Amen. The Holy Spirit. Where's the Holy Spirit? Come on. <laughs> The Holy Spirit has helped me overcome my weakness. He's taking a hold together with me against my weakness. Say it again. He's taking a hold together with me against my weakness. Thank you guys. Thank you so much. Let's get a good hand. Thank you guys. So, the Spirit helps us in our weakness to overcome that. Is there any weakness or any sin that is too much for the Holy Spirit? Holy Spirit, oh, you have to come to heaven for this. <laughs> I don't think so. The Holy Spirit is powerful. There is no sin. There is no weakness. There is no evil thing that is too much for the Holy Spirit. No. But what must I do? I must join. Because he's going to help me take a hold of together with me against my weakness. So Spirit himself helps us in our weaknesses. So Holy Spirit help me. I pray in the Spirit. Holy Spirit helps me. And by the Spirit, we are able to put to death the sinful deeds of our body. And if we if we try it on our own, we may never succeed. But with the help of the Holy Spirit, we can. That's why in Galatians 5 and verse 24, in that same passage, where Paul is writing about walking in the Spirit. He comes to this conclusion. Let's read it together. He says, those who are Christ's have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. See, it's our passions and desires that are causing us to do wrong. But if you are Christ, Paul can say this, if you're walking in the spirit, he says, those who are Christ, they've crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. That's who you are as a believer. That's who you should be as a believer. Somebody's crucified the flesh. Why? Because you're walking in the spirit. You're living in the spirit. You're being led by the spirit. Amen? Now, sometimes... Crucifying the flesh may not be easy. It's painful. Jesus put it like this in Matthew 5, 29 and 30. He says, if your right eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and cast it from you. For it is more profitable for you that one of your members perish than for your whole body to be cast into hell. If your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and cast it from you. For it is more profitable for you that one of your members perish than for your whole body to be cast into hell. So sometimes 
that crucifying of the flesh is like this. It's painful. You're, it's like plucking out your eye and casting it away. Now, he's not talking about it literally. Then we'll all be blind and no limbs. <laughs> but he's, 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 he's getting a message across. That when you're dealing with sin, you've got to deal it with severity. You've got to cut it off. Don't pamper it. Don't try to put grace on it. Grace empowers you to overcome sin. Now, don't accommodate it. No. He said, you've got to cut it off. It's painful, but it leads you to life. Amen? So, number one, know that you are free from sin. Number two, use the word in the area of your weakness. Number three, walk in the spirit, crucify the flesh. Number four, put on Jesus and make no room for the flesh. Put on Jesus. Romans chapter 13, and I'll just read verse 13. 14, sorry. Romans 13, and we go straight to verse 14. Let's read it together, please. Romans 13, verse 14. But put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lust. So what's Paul saying? He says, put on the Lord Jesus. What does it mean to put on? To put on Jesus means to desire to be like him. In thought, word, and deed. Be like him. Put on Jesus. So I'm going to be like Jesus. Put on Jesus. So when you get out in the morning, when you go to school, your college, your place of work, a business meeting, whatever, I put on Jesus. I'm going to be like Jesus in that situation. I'm going to be like Jesus when I meet that person. I'm going to be like Jesus when I enter that, that meeting. I'm going to be like I'm put on Jesus. I'm going to be like him in thought, word, and deed. He says, put on Jesus, and what do you get rid of? It says, make no provision, make no room for the flesh to fulfill its desires. Don't give it a chance. Don't, don't give it any space in your life. Make no room. The Greek literally means don't even take any forethought on how you're planning ahead. You know, I will go through the back door. I'll get in there, quickly drink and run back in here. No, no, no. Don't do any of that. No forethought. Make no room. No, make no provision. So, what must I do? Put on Jesus. You desire, you determine, I'm going to be like Jesus. And I'm not giving the flesh any chance. No room. So that's why you err. I shouldn't say that word, I shouldn't use the word err, uh, but you choose to take the side of caution and never throw caution to the wind when it comes to your flesh. Until you die, never trust your flesh. Until you die, never trust your, after you die, Your flesh will not be a problem. <laughs> but until you die, there's one thing you can never trust, your own flesh. Doesn't matter how spiritual you are. You can fast 80 days in a year. Doesn't matter. You can't still trust your flesh. You can be as anointed as whoever. You can still not trust your flesh. Make no provision for the flesh. This is the Apostle Paul writing, so he should know what he's saying. So, for instance, you know, you got to keep in mind what you feed grows, what you starve dies. And the more you make no provision for your flesh, your flesh is going to keep quiet. So, for instance, you know, let's just take an example. Um, you are a believer, you love Jesus, you're, you're doing wonderful in your spiritual life, but if and when you find yourself that if you're in, in a certain company of people and over there you're falling and doing something wrong, then don't make any provision for it. It's very simple. Of course, we have to interact with all kinds of people. We, we make, meet with all kinds of people. But you have a choice. You have the right to choose who you spend time with, your company you keep. And if 
in that company you end up doing the wrong things, you have the choice. Don't go back there. Make no provision for the flesh. Now Paul wrote 1 Corinthians 15, 33. He says, uh, don't be deceived. Evil company corrupts good habits. Bad company is going to affect your character. It's going to affect you, you. So don't go back there. Don't make provision for it. Just tell them, sorry, I'm not coming. Why? Because you want to put on the Lord Jesus and make no provision. Now, if you, you know, if you are sure that, that, that you, know, you go there and you can say no to whatever things they're doing and still be a positive influence, okay. But you need to be sure you can do that. If you're not sure, don't go. Make no room for the flesh. If your mobile phone is causing you to sin, do something with it. Don't use it. So, but how will my friends call me? To send them an email or something. I don't know. Because nowadays, you know, if you have your phone, you have nothing to do. You go online, and then you know, off there you go doing all the things that you're not supposed to be doing. And the phone, that device, now becomes your problem. You need to get rid of it. Put it away. Or take off data on your phone. Just use it to answer calls. Whatever. Do something to protect yourself. Make no provision for the flesh. So that you don't fulfill its wrong desires. And in all of this, uh, this is not in the sermon notes. It's point number five added by my wife. While we were driving from west to, <laughs> she said, you also have to tell them that you need to be accountable to others. So I'll add point number five. You know, the whole point, and that's a good point actually. We're part of a church community. And it's good to have people help you in your journey. So if there are areas of weakness, then, and you want to really overcome, and you're not, you know, you're not able to do this on your own, Talk to somebody and say, hey, I need help. And let them walk with you, you know, through that, through that season of life until you overcome. Or you can stay accountable to them in some way that they will help you through. So that's the advantage of belonging to a church community. Make friends and have people help you in this journey. The Bible does say, let us provoke one another to good works which also can imply that you provoke each other out of bad works. Get them out. Do good. So be a part of that community. So let's close. How do we overcome the flesh? Recap these four points. Let's all say it out together. Number one, know you are free from the power of sin. Number two, use the word in relation to your area of weakness. Number three, Walk in the spirit and crucify the flesh. Number four, put on Jesus and make no room for the flesh. I tell you, all of us as God's people live victorious over our flesh. And this is so important because people see you. And you may be the only representation of Jesus to the world outside. And if we as believers live as, car as carnally minded, fleshly ruled, they are not going to be interested in Jesus. But if you, as, you and I as believers overcome the flesh and we live a life where we put on Jesus before people, they'll say, I want to be like that. I want to know about your Jesus. Amen. Worship team, please come. Pastors, please come. We're going to take a few moments to just pray and minister. This morning, we're going to pray. And I want you, as a believer, stand before God and say, Lord, I know that there are these weaknesses in my life, areas of my fleshly desires that I've not yet dealt with. 
and I want to deal with it today. I need your help. I heard your word. I want to deal with it. Don't continue just tolerating that in your life. Whatever it is, and I, we use the example of lying. It's just a simple example, but it could be something else that, that needs to be dealt with in your life, in the flesh, in the desires. So I want you just today say, God, I heard your word. I want to deal with it. And then I'm going to do what I heard today. I know I can break free from it. This is not the end of the world. I can live free. There is no sin that can control me, no sin that can dominate me. The Bible says sin will not have dominion over my life. So today, I know I can be free from it, whatever it is. If it's a sexual sin, that passage in 1 Corinthians 6 is very strong. It says, he who commits sin, sexual sin, is sinning against his own body. That means... You are destroying your own body. So you come for prayer. The prayer will not be of any use because we can pray for you, but then you go and commit those sins. The Bible says you're destroying your own body. How are we going to help you? So you got to say, Lord, I don't want to destroy my own body. I want to be free. I want to be free. And then, Take the word of God. Use it in the area of your weakness. Walk in the spirit. Crucify the flesh. It's going to be painful. But do it. Put on Jesus. Make no provision for the flesh. That's how you and I walk every day. We put on Jesus. We make no room for the flesh. No room for the flesh. That's the way we live. We put on Jesus. And we make no room for the flesh. Amen. So we're going to pray towards that first. Then. You know, we will uh, just let the Holy Spirit minister to us. Could we all rise to our feet, please? I also want to take a moment right now. If there's anyone here that you've never received Jesus into your heart, into your life, maybe you're watching online, or maybe you've come into this auditorium, invited by a friend, and you don't know Jesus in your life, you know, the greatest thing that can happen is for Jesus to forgive you your sins and to make you a child of God. That's the greatest thing that can happen to your life. And if you've never received Jesus into your life to forgive you your sin and make you a child of God, that's the starting point. That's where it all begins. I want to lead you in a simple prayer right now. And if you've never prayed a prayer before to receive Jesus into your life, you can do this with me. Let's all just pray, please. And if you've never done this before, just pray this simple prayer with me. Those of you online, you can do this right where you are. Just say this with me, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I receive you as my Savior. Forgive my sins. Make me a child of God. And help me follow you. And you alone. The rest of my life. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Anybody, you prayed this prayer with me for the first time. Just raise your hand. Anybody in the auditorium? I want to see your hand. If you prayed this prayer with me right now, for the very first time, I see one hand there. God bless you. Anybody else? You prayed this prayer with me. I see another hand there. God bless you. Anybody else? God bless you. Anybody else? God bless you. God bless you. At least two hands here. Those online, if you prayed that prayer, you're welcome to type your name in the chat and say, I did it. And I God bless you. Welcome to the family. I want to encourage you to grow in your faith. Read your Bible. Pray. Be part of a good church. And keep growing in Jesus. Let's pray on the message that we heard this morning. Father, we thank you for your word. And I pray with each one of us here this morning, God. You have made it possible for us to overcome the flesh. That we can walk in the spirit. We will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. That they who are Christ's have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. And Father, right now I pray for every person in the auditorium, those who 
watching online, those listening, that you will touch each of us, empower us by your word, by your spirit, to break free from every yoke of bondage, from everything that's holding us in captive to sin. Let these things be broken off of our lives. May we walk victorious over the flesh. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We're going to just let the pastor's minister just go ahead and speak. And as the Lord, you know, puts things in your heart, just go ahead, release. Now, I just want you to be open. This is not, not, not you know, something we make up. We just make ourselves available to the Holy Spirit to minister, whether it's healing, it's deliverance. Uh, you know, the Bible talks about the gifts of the Holy Spirit, words of knowledge, words of wisdom, prophecy, tongues, interpretation of tongues. So we just want to be open. So uh, the pastor will just minister, and you know, we'll do that for a few minutes as the Lord leads us, and then we'll close. So just be open, please. I, I heard this conversation. It's like a prayer. Uh, this person and God, um, this person's praying. Um, I'm going through such a horrible time. Uh, God, where are you? You, you don't. Uh, do you not see my pain? Do you not see how I'm, uh, how I'm suffering? Uh, and uh, uh, you know, the Lord uh, replies, uh, saying, "I, uh, I was with you. I'm, I'm with you every step of the way." Uh, even though you don't see me and and the person replies uh, but this situation is gone this this is destroyed i'm i'm destroyed everything is gone it's all broken and uh, I, I just feel like uh, 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 you know maybe you're, uh, you're not able to discern or you're not able to receive the message from the lord saying that he is able to redeem everything I believe that's the word that the Lord wants to release, that he is able to redeem things that we, th we think are destroyed, are gone, lost forever. He says he's able to redeem everything. He is the redeemer. I just want to declare that uh, word uh, over uh, anyone who's identifying with this. Um, can whatever, raise your hand. Just whatever raise your hand. Is, if anyone is, here, you relate to what Vinny is saying. Just raise your hand. Those of you online, just connect. Now you say, mm -hmm. I, I relate to what he's saying. Just raise your hand. Then Vinny, just go ahead and pray. Just bless him. Yes. Um, whatever is, is broken, just, just lift that up to the Lord uh, and, and receive uh, the redemption that the Lord is going to bring to you. Father, we thank you that you are the Redeemer. You are our rock and our Redeemer, O oh God. We thank you for this, Lord. We, we release, Lord, your redeeming grace over your people, O oh God. And we thank you for your word that says, uh, to them that have no, no strength, you, you increase might. Oh God, and, and we just declare the, the power that comes from you, Lord, the promises that you have spoken. We declare that, Lord, over your people and, and speak strength arise. Strength arise in Jesus' name. And we declare that your situation be redeemed in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you that you do it. Hallelujah, God. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead, anyone. Jean. I just want to reiterate once again uh, what Bini said. Uh, but I, I had these words that similarly came up. Uh, if you've heard words like, I'm at the end of the road, at the end of my hill, uh, I've thrown the towel in, this is the ultimate. If these words have been coming to you, um, I just want to encourage you with scripture. Uh, this is from Isaiah 35, verses 4 onwards. It says, Say to those who are fearful hearted, Be strong, do not fear. Behold, your God will come with vengeance. With the recompense of God, He will come and save you. 
then the eyes of the blind shall be opened the ears of the dead shall deaf shall be unstopped and the lame shall leap like a deer and the tongue of the dumb sing for waters shall burst forth in the wilderness streams in the desert the parched ground shall become a pool and the thirsty land springs of water in the habitation of jackals where each lay there shall be grass with reeds and rushes it's just a word for you to know that you're not at the end look back and god's promised there will be a pool there will be streams there will be waters there's going to be abundance and we just declare that over everyone who's come in this situation believing that this is the end we just want to i just want to declare that it is the beginning of god's abundance for you amen 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 to pray for those who having a pain in their neck and their shoulder area uh, i'm receiving this word frozen shoulder so if you're having acute pain um, you know just poking pain uh, you're not able to move your shoulder or your neck area just pray for that right now father we come to you in jesus name god and we just pray for all those who are having pain acute pain stinging pain in their in their shoulder in their neck area we release that in the mighty name of jesus we thank you god that on the cross you took every every curse every pain every sickness god we just release them from every pain from every sickness we pronounce them healed and whole in the name of jesus god we pray for every muscle every nerve every tissue every ligament and bone in that area god every swelling that is there every inflammation that is there to be gone to be released god we thank you god that your hand is moving over them it's just touching them and releasing that pain giving them comfort and strength and restoration father god god we pray for those who are oppressed by the enemy god oppressed father we release them from every spirit of oppression father from every demonic affliction father we we come Pastor, every spirit of infirmity in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, God, that they are healed and whole and well. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. Let's just pray together, and then we'll just take a few moments to worship and close. Father, we thank you for all the words that've been released. Thank you for the healing. our prayers that have been prayed and father we thank you for every person inside the auditorium those watching and we just pray that god that your healing power will touch will touch them and make them whole especially also lord release healing on those with kidney problems so that uh, they they have this chronic kidney problems for uh, a lot of healing of even the ovaries problems around the ovaries god that there will be healing touch on these people father god and people who are believing you touch looking to you right now for healing for deliverance even if you have not called out the condition father in the name of jesus that the healing word of jesus touch them that the power of god flow through them that it release them from every infirmity every ailment we thank you that you are the lord our healer we bless you god we give you glory honor and praise in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. I'm going to close with a benediction and I'm just going to let the worship team take on from there. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our heavenly Father, and the sweet fellowship of his holy spirit be with each of us always in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Thank you for listening. We trust this message was a blessing to you. For more free resources including sermon, sermon notes, publications, please visit apcwo.org. For information on APC Bible College in Bangalore, please visit apcwo.org/biblecollege. Please remember to download the All People's Church Bangalore app from the app or Google Play Stores.